The first ever recorded government currency came from Lydia, modern Turkey, in the 7th century, when King Aliates began minting the Lydian lion, a coin made of naturally occurring alloy of gold and silver called electrum. The lion had a standard weight and a design on one side to prevent counterfeiting, which greatly accelerated commerce and trade. Greece, Persia, and India shortly thereafter also began minting coins of varying metals with designs reflecting their respective cultures. However, the Romans were the first to issue a money that would serve as a local reserve currency from Asia to Africa to Northern Europe with catastrophic consequences for the world. The power of monetary policy is absolute, and history shows that absolute power corrupts absolutely. The common characteristic of government currencies over the years? The irresistible urge to abuse the privilege of controlling the money supply in order to finance wars and other unpopular measures without having to raise taxes or borrow money, resulting in the all but total destruction by debasement of one government currency after another. Debasement is the practice of reducing the amount of precious metals found in coins while maintaining their face value. Theft. Debasement has been used for as long as government currencies have existed, and as a direct result of this manipulation and mismanagement, incalculable lives have been destroyed, either financially or kinetically. During Emperor Nero's reign in the first century, in order to finance wars and less legitimate expenses, the Roman Empire began debasing the denarii by reducing the amount of precious metals in them, in this case silver, by 8%. The practice continued over the next few hundred years until the denarius contained but 0.5% silver. Inflation gradually rose throughout the second and third centuries, causing a total loss of faith in the Roman currency and leading to hyperinflation. The Roman currency became worthless causing the eventual collapse of the empire. This still serves today as a warning of the perils of currency debasement, one that apparently goes completely unheeded by most of the civilized world. You buy one liter of maple syrup, but I only put 90 centiliters of maple syrup in the bottle and 10 centiliters of water. Government does this by diluting precious metals with cheaper ones, like copper or nickel. The mint would then use the stolen precious metals to mint new, free money, and debased coins to pay their debts and expenses, while the population is left holding the bag classy. This eroded trust in the government, in its ability to maintain a stable currency, and created inflation. While debasement is physically possible in precious metal money, in a fiat currency system like ours, the process becomes a little bit more opaque. But that doesn't mean it's stopped. Au contraire. Now, debasement happens through central bank money printing, or creation, i.e. supply dilution, as well as by purchasing real securities on the open market using made-up money. This is called quantitative easing. Many historians, economists, and political scientists have referred to these practices as counterfeiting and theft. So to confer unencumbered large-scale fiat debasement with an air of legitimacy, new monetary theories such as neoclassical and Keynesian economics, as well as more recently MMT, modern monetary theory, were developed and began to be taught in universities. Hmm, it sounds a lot like propaganda and disinformation. I'd never call it that though. Debasement in Rome caused inflation, economic instability, social unrest, and eroded Roman citizens' trust in their government and economy. Meanwhile, with inflation, the cost of maintaining the army increased while the purchasing power of real wages went down. And new trade disruptions due to a money that no one trusted anymore wrecked the empire's ability to supply their populations and army with real goods, raw materials, food, and everything else that is so crucial to civilization. As as citizens became further squeezed, state revenues continued to decline, which made it harder to fund military operations, and so on and so forth in a vicious cycle to the bottom. Does this sound familiar? It should, because that's exactly what's happening today. Next month we cover the devastating ramifications of Rome's monetary failure and the thousand year void it left on the world, aka the Dark Ages. Oh yes, we are about to get medieval on money. Together we'll travel nimbly through this period of pestilence and death until the enlightenment at the end of the tunnel. Plague, famine, tyranny, and torture, hurrah! Obviously you're not going to want to miss this one, so stay tuned. Start your free account at endax.io today.